بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد فآله الطيبين القاهرين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآناء إلى قيام يوم الدين In the name of Allah, the all beneficent, the all merciful All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds and the best of blessings and purest of greetings be on the one sent as mercy to all creatures, our master and guardian Abu Qasim Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the last of prophets and messengers, and on his immaculate progeny, the leaders of guidance and the lanterns in darkness, the imams of the nation and saviors of mankind and their followers up to the day of resurrection. The Holy Quran says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-Rasul wa uli al-amri minkum, fa in tanaza'atum fi shay'in farudduhu ila Allah wa al-Rasul, in kuntum tu'minun billahi wal yawm al-akhir, thalika khayrum wa ahsanu ta'awila. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Apostle and those vested with authority among you. Then if you quarrel about anything, refer it to Allah and the Apostle, if you believe in Allah and the last day. This is better and very good in the end. 4.59 as an introduction, I would like to attract your kind attention to some remarks. First, human beings, especially as opposed to animals and machines, are sociable. The society is strong filled where the people are competing against each other for benefits and pleasures. Then they need some criteria for justice. The justice means to place everything and everyone in the right place and exact position, determined by the reason and the revelations as proofs of Allah. In the other words, it means fairness in the way the people are treated. Fairness for all the people who belong to a society applying the divine law. Second, the human society needs a qualified group to officially and legally manage, organize, and control the country and make all the decisions about public affairs and services. Then the government is a necessity for establishing the justice. However, since an unknown time in the history, the government has been alienated and abused as an influent tool and as an extensive thick cover for the systemic oppression. There are many forms of government, regardless of the imama, in the world today, monarchy, dictatorship and democracy are three of the most common forms of government. About monarchy, please bear in your mind that the monarch's authority is hereditary. It stays in the family, usually being passed down to a son or daughter. King, queen and emperor are some of the titles that have been given to monarchs. Monarchies were once the most common type of government in the world. Today, however, Real monarchies, in which the monarch holds all the power, are rare. An example of such a present-day monarchy is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Okay, about dictatorship. Dictatorship is a government controlled by one person called a dictator. A dictator is different from a monarch because a dictator usually takes power by force rather than by inheriting it. Historically, dictators have usually come to power 
when an existing government is weak or has lost public support. Dictators are frequently military leaders. They rely heavily on the armed forces and the police to maintain their power. Military dictatorships of the 20th century have included Germany under Adolf Hitler and Iraq under Saddam Hussein. Democracy Third form of government is a democracy. The pretense is that it is a system in which the power is ideally shared by all the people. Democracy means government by the people. By voting and by choosing representatives, the people decide how their government will meet their needs and protect their rights and freedoms. No countries all over the world have adopted democratic forms of government. Most countries that were once monarchies have become democracies. Many of these countries, such as Great Britain and Japan, still have monarchs with ceremonial duties. But real power is held by democratically elected representatives. Countries with this form of democratic government are often called constitutional monarchies. Third, a considerable notice is the idea of liberty. The liberty means that people should be free. It has long been a popular idea. The superficial notion about freedom is that it means doing as one likes a notion which has resulted in the rejection of divine law. But of course, real freedom is submission to Allah's will and plan, the wise creator of the universe. The Holy Quran frequently commands the believers to obey Allah and those fit to be followed from among ourselves. The holy verse which I have recited as the theme of my discourse is one such verse which indicates whom we should obey. It commands us to obey Allah, the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and those vested with authority. There is no difference of opinion among Muslims concerning the obedience due to Almighty Allah and the Holy Prophet However, there is difference of opinion about the meaning of the words those vested with authority among you. The Bakri or self-called Sunnis believe that in the above verse the words those vested with authority am refer to state officials. Accordingly, they consider obedience to kings and governors compulsory, even though these officials may be evil. In fact, this belief is wrong, is false. Shortage of time does not permit me to make a lengthy argument in support of my point. So I will trouble you with only a short discussion. What does in fact mean Ulul Amr, those vested with authority, who are fit to be followed by the Muslim community, or who are qualified to manage the affairs of Allah's cities and servants? In other words, are the actual leaders and presidents, kings and governors of the world qualified for their role? Surely these questions are very important. In order to get access to a truth and logical answer, we will have to consider some points in the next session. Thank you.